Major Wallace Cole Hogan, Jr., United States Army. Staff Sergeant Jimmy I. Hawley, United States Army, retired. Angela M. Houts. Brady K. Howell. Peggy M. Hurt. Lieutenant Colonel Stephen N. Highland, Jr., United States Army. Lieutenant Colonel Robert J. Himmel, United States Air Force, retired. Sergeant Major Lacey B. Ivory, United States Army. Brian C. Jack. Stephen D. Jacoby. Lieutenant Colonel Dennis M. Johnson, United States Army. Judith L. Jones. Ann C. Judge. Brenda Kegler. Chandler R. Keller. Yvonne E. Kennedy. Norma Cruz Kahn. Karen Ann Kincaid. Lieutenant Michael S. Lamana, United States Navy. David W. Lechek. Dong Chol Lee. Jennifer Lewis. And her husband, Kenneth E. Lewis. Samantha L. Lightborn Allen. Major Stephen V. Long, United States Army. James T. Lynch, Jr. Terrence M. Lynch. Petty officers, second class, made up on lines to fourth United States Navy. Shelley A. Marshall. Teresa M. Martin. Ida L. Massenacre. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Dean E. Matson, United States Army. <laughs> Lieutenant General Timothy J. Mudd, United States Army. <laughs> Robert J. Maxwell. Renee A. May. Molly L. McKenzie. Dora Marie Minchaka. Patricia E. Mickley. Major Ronald D. Milam, United States Army. Gerard P. Morin, Jr. Odessa V. Morris. Petty Officer First Class Brian A. Moss, United States Navy. Teddington H. Moy. 
Lieutenant Commander Patrick J. Murphy, United States Navy Reserve. Christopher C. Newton. Kang Nok Wen. Petty Officer Second Class Michael A. North, United States Navy. Barbara K. Olson. Ruben S. Ornado. Diana B. Pedro. Lieutenant Jonas M. Panic, United States Navy Reserve. Major Clifford L. Patterson, Jr., United States Army. Robert Penninger. Robert R. Plodger III. And his wife, Zandra F. Plodger. Lieutenant Darren H. Pontell, United States Navy Reserve. Scott Powell. Captain Jack D. Punches, United States Navy Retired. Petty Officer First Class, Joseph J. Pysier, Jr., United States Navy. Lisa J. Rains. Deborah A. Ramser. Rhonda Sue Rasmussen. Petty Officer First Class, Marsha D. Ratchford, United States Navy. Martha M. Reske. Todd H. Rubin. Cecilia E. Lawson Richard. Edward V. Rowenhorst. Judy Rowlett. Sergeant Major Robert E. Russell, United States Army, retired. Chief Warrant Officer William R. Ruth, United States Army Reserve. Charles E. Sabin, Sr. Marjorie C. Salamone. John P. Sammartino. Colonel David M. Scales, United States Army. Commander Robert A. Slagle, United States Navy. Janice M. Scott. Lieutenant Colonel Michael L. Selves, United States Army, retired. Marianne H. Serva. Commander Dan F. Shanover, United States Navy. Antoinette M. Sherman. Diane M. Simmons. And her husband, George W. Simmons. Donald D. Simmons. Cheryl D. Sincock.
Chief Greg H. Smallwood, United States Navy. <phone rings> Lieutenant Colonel Gary F. Smith, United States Army, retired. <phone rings> Marie Ray Sopper. <phone rings> Robert Spiesman. Patricia J. Stotts. Edna L. Stevens. Norma Lang Sterling. Sergeant Major Larry L. Strickland, United States Army. Hilda E. Taylor. Lieutenant Colonel Kip P. Taylor, United States Army. <phone rings> Leonard E. Taylor. <phone rings> Sandra C. Taylor. <phone rings> Sandra D. Teague. Lieutenant Carl W. Teepe, United States Army, retired. Sergeant Tamara C. Thurman, United States Army. Lieutenant Commander Otis V. Tolbert, United States Navy. Staff Sergeant Willie Q. Troy, United States Army, retired. Lieutenant Commander Ronald J. Vock, United States Navy Reserve. <phone rings> Lieutenant Colonel Karen J. Wagner, United States Army. <phone rings> Meta L. Fuller Waller. <phone rings> Specialist Chin Sun Pack Wells, United States Army. Staff Sergeant Maudlin A. White, United States Army. Sandra L. White. Ernest M. Wilshire. Lieutenant Commander David L. Williams, United States Navy. Major Dwayne Williams, United States Army. Chief Marvin Roger Woods, United States Navy, retired. Captain John D. Yemniki Sr., United States Navy, retired. Vicki Yancey. Petty Officer, 2nd Class, Kevin W. Yoakum, United States Navy. Chief Donald M. Young, United States Navy. Edmund G. Young, Jr. Lisa L. Young. <phone rings> Shuyun Young. <phone rings> and her husband, Yuguang Jin.
I invite you to join me in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pause on this solemn anniversary with heavy hearts as we remember this horrific tragedy took place on the grounds of the Pentagon, taking from us 
184 of nearly 3,000 sons and daughters of our nation that perished on this day. We especially remember the surviving families and friends and ask your continued healing of the grief that they bear each day. We celebrate these great American heroes who have laid such a supreme sacrifice onto the altar of freedom. And Lord, we ask that you bring them comfort, comfort to all survivors as our nation remembers their patriotism. Oh God, we also remember and offer thanks to those who served, delivered aid, delivered assistance, and even saved others in this time of tragedy and need. Lord, 20 years later, our prayer is that we unite together as a nation and embrace one another with dignity and respect for all. That we seek peaceful resolutions and we learn to choose love over fear each day. And Lord, with your help, oh God, help us find hope and forgiveness in ourselves and in this world which we live, that we can make a difference to everyone around us. Lord, through your help, through your guidance, through your loving grace, we pray this in thy holy name. Amen. I now invite you to stand and join me in a moment of silence. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. It is my pleasure to introduce General Mark A. Milley, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Mr. Secretary, distinguished guests, Thank you all for participating in this morning's ceremony. But most importantly, I want to thank the people we're here for today, the survivors of the murderous attack on this building, and the families 
of the fallen. Thank you all for participating and we are all deeply humbled to be standing here on this sacred ground. 20 years ago began as a typical morning for Pentagon employees. Those in uniform and our civilian colleagues settled into the rhythms and routines of a normal Tuesday morning with a near cloudless sky, temperatures in the low 60s, and it promised to be a beautiful day. The passengers and crew of American Airlines Flight 77 were a little over an hour into their flight from Dulles to LA. Fathers, mothers, husbands, wives, sons, daughters, brothers, and sisters. All that changed at 9.37 a.m. as the innocent were caught, caught in the crossfire of terror. The ideology of hatred unfolded on this very ground. In seconds, scores of lives were lost. 184 men, women, and children were slaughtered in the violent impact and fury. 59 passengers and crew, 125 of our Pentagon colleagues, and the innocent ranged in age from three to 71 years old. Those who perished here were among the 2,977 killed on that day here in New York and in Pennsylvania. Not for what they did, but for what they believed and what they represented. Not for anything they did, but rather for who they were. The people we lost that day are not just names and numbers. We remember them today for not only who they were, but for what they could have become. They were irreplaceable to their families, instrumental in their jobs, woven into the fabric of their community, full of life and potential. Lives cut short, pain that can never be properly described in words, suffering that will never fully heal, and no words that I nor anyone else will ever say that can fill the gaping hole. But we, the living, we have a solemn duty to honor their memory, their legacy, to honor and remember them, not just today, but every day. The horrific acts of terrorism on that day were meant to disrupt our way of life and destroy the idea that is America. That idea is simple, yet incredibly powerful. The idea that terrorists hate and fear, the idea that all of us, men and women, black and white, Asian and Indian, no matter what the color of our skin, no matter if we are Catholic or Protestant, Muslim or Jew, or if you choose not to believe at all, the idea is that each and every one of us is created free and equal. The idea that we will rise or fall based on our merit, the idea of a free press, free speech, due process of law, the right to vote or peacefully assemble and protest for or against this cause or that. The idea of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. All of that is what our fallen believed in and what they embodied. All of the values and principles embedded in our Constitution and made real in our daily lives were paid for with the blood of the fallen on this place at 937 on September 11th, 2001. Those ideas were and still are hated by our enemies, the fascists, the Nazis, the communists, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, the Taliban, authoritarians, dictators, and tyrants of all kinds. They hate those ideas. They hate those values. And on 911, they tried to destroy us. They tried to divide us, and they tried ultimately in vain to terrify us. 
But their murderous intent was never realized. Instead of sowing fear and division, we gathered in New York and Pennsylvania, right here at the Pentagon, and we came together as a nation with acts of heroism, unity, and perseverance, many conducted by you in the audience today. While we grieve for our fallen, we celebrate the life they led. Their legacy lives on in the idea that is America, and no terrorist anywhere on earth can ever destroy that idea. Since that dark day 20 years ago, the men and women of the United States military have fought tirelessly to defeat terrorists in Afghanistan and around the world. Both at home and abroad, their talent and their efforts and their courage, their personal valor has carried this fight day and night. We did not fear what was in front of us because we loved what was behind us. 800,000 of us in uniform served in Afghanistan over the last 20 years. Tens of thousands more have served elsewhere in the collective fight against terrorism. And thousands more stand watch today all around the world. 2,461 of us gave the last full measure of devotion, including 13 just two weeks ago, while 20,000 698 of us were wounded, and untold thousands more suffer with the invisible wounds of war as we close this terrible chapter in our nation's history. For two consecutive decades, our men and women in uniform, along with our brothers and sisters in the intelligence and law enforcement agencies, protected our nation from terrorist attack. For those of us in uniform, for our families who have suffered and sacrificed along our side, for those who have supported us, these have been incredibly emotional, exhausting, and trying years. And we are all now, this very day, very conflicted with feelings of pain and anger, sorrow and sadness, combined with pride and resilience. But one thing I am certain of, for every soldier, sailor, airman, and marine, for every CIA officer, for every FBI agent, for every cop and fireman, you did your duty. Your service mattered. Your sacrifice was not in vain. So let us resolve. Let us resolve here, yet again today, on this hallowed ground, to never forget, to never forget those who were murdered by terrorists. Never forget those who rushed to save their lives and gave theirs in exchange. Never forget the sons and the daughters, the brothers and sisters and the mothers and fathers who gave their tomorrows for our todays. Honor them. Honor them today and forever. Honor the cause they served. Honor their commitment to this experiment in liberty that we call the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now my pleasure and deep honor to introduce the Secretary of Defense of the United States of America, the Honorable Lloyd J. Austin. Thank you. It is an honor to be here with you, and especially with the families and loved ones of those taken from us 20 years ago, and with the first responders who raced to help, and with our brothers and sisters in arms whose lives were changed forever on that day of fire. On behalf of the Department of Defense, let me renew our deepest condolences to the families and loved ones of all those lost on 9-11, including the 184 souls taken from us in the attack on the Pentagon 
in the building and on Flight 77. We know that you carry pain every day. We know that you bear your losses not just at times of ceremony, but also in ordinary moments of absence. In quiet minutes that can seem to stretch on for hours. All of us are here because we remember. And I hope knowing that is at least some measure of comfort. Just as we once worked alongside so many of them, we now mourn alongside all of you. Today of all days, we gather their memory close. And my thoughts turn to Lieutenant General Tim Maud, an outstanding soldier and leader. He was killed on 9-11 while serving as the Army's Deputy Chief of Staff for Personnel. I still wish that we could turn to him for, for counsel. And I still remember his love for his soldiers, his army, and his country. We know that the memories can be hard to bear. And we know that sorrow doesn't end. But over the years, we hope that the good memories come to us more often and more easily. And today, we remember not just who our fallen teammates were, but we remember the mission that they shared. And we recall their common commitment to defend our republic and to squarely face new dangers. As many of you know, the construction of the Pentagon began on another, another September 11th, back in 1941. As war raged overseas, workers with steam shovels began digging that morning into the Virginia clay. Historians say that it was a perfect late day summer, late summer day with a crystal clear blue sky and a hint of fall in the air. And on that September 11th night, President Franklin Roosevelt gave a fireside chat about the growing threat of Nazi aggression. America's attention was turned inward and focused on the depression. But the president was sure that his fellow citizens, whom he called hard-headed, and far-sighted would meet the challenge of fascism. He said, the American people have faced other grave crises in their history. With American courage, with American resolution, they will do no less today. And the president added that his fellow citizens knew that, that times of testing call for clear heads and fearless hearts. Clear heads and fearless hearts. That's what our times demand, demand again. And they demand that we remember that same September day 60 years later. And the ideals that brought our teammates to work on September 11th 2001. Now, almost a quarter of the citizens who we defend today were born after 9-11. And that includes thousands of our outstanding young service members. And many of the 13 brave men and women who just days ago gave their lives to save others in Afghanistan were babies back in 2001. And as Secretary of Defense and a veteran of the Afghan war, let me underscore again how much we owe to all those who fought. 
and to all those who fell while serving our country in Afghanistan. As the years march on, we must ensure that all our fellow Americans know and understand what happened here on 9-11, and in Manhattan, and in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. It is our responsibility to remember, and it is our duty to defend democracy. We cannot know what the next 20 years will bring. We cannot know what new dangers they will carry. We cannot foresee what Churchill once called the original originality of malice. But we do know that America will always lead. And we do know the only compass that can guide us through the storms ahead. It is our core values and the principles enshrined in our Constitution. Liberty, rights, the rule of law. And a fierce commitment to a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. It is our job to defend the great experiment that is America to protect this exceptional republic, body and soul, and to defend the American people in our democracy, even when it's hard, especially when it's hard. And ladies and gentlemen, we must be tireless guardians of our ideals as well as our security, because we cannot have one without the other. Let me thank again the families of the loved ones and survivors for all that you have given and for the inspiration that you provide. The hallways that we tread were the ones that so many of them walked. It will always be our duty to fulfill their missions and to live up to their goodness and to stand guard over this democracy. We still work here. We still remember here. And we still uphold our values here. With clear heads and fearless hearts. Thank you and may God protect the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for God Bless America. I invite you again to join me in prayer. O oh, holy God, as we come to a conclusion of this observance of this day, remind us to build up what has been torn down, to repair what is broken, overcome hate with love, and be a true instrument of peace. Through this and through you, O oh God, we can live in a way that your love is a reflection through us and to others. 
May we carry this comfort of remembrance today for these great Americans and also the torch of unity through your peace and love. We pray this in the holy name. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Thank you for joining us this morning. The memorial is open at this time until 3 p.m.